Welcome back to Guitar Search Saturdays. My name's Shane, this is episode 40, and I thought today we'd do something a little bit different. While 2020 wasn't the year we expected, it was the year we sadly got. A lot of plans were cancelled for a lot of people around the world, including myself. I'd planned on doing a big epic new series of videos overseas, but obviously that didn't happen. So I thought what we'd do today is take a little bit of a look back at some of the best guitars and best guitar shops I've seen in recent times. Now odds are if you're watching this, you're probably thinking you might have seen all the shops that'll appear in this video. I'm actually adding some stuff to this video you haven't seen yet, and that those episodes never saw the light of day. So kick back, relax, and enjoy, and I'm going to try my best to explain exactly where we are at any particular moment in time. I felt like this would be a really cool way to wrap up this particular season of 10 episodes, and coming up on the next season, you're actually going to see all new shops. I'm planning that right now. If you do enjoy your Guitar Search Saturdays, please give the video a thumbs up and share it around with any guitar nerd friends that you have. I greatly appreciate it. Let's get into it. This first guitar shop we found by accident, it's called Four Sound in Copenhagen. Unfortunately though, the shop is now permanently closed, which is a huge shame. It's got some really unique things going on I hadn't seen in any other shop around the world. Now while on the surface this might not look like a large guitar shop, it is, and there were three main sections of this shop that made it stand out, which is why it's in this video. The first thing I really love about this is their museum of sorts up on the top floor dedicated to 1970s Fender instruments. This is a private collection from the owner of the store dubbed Bob's Brownies. That's the name of the collection. As you can see, a theme running through each of these guitars and basses. This is a total love letter to the 1970s instruments and one of the most unique things I've seen in any guitar shop from around the world. The second thing that really made this guitar shop stand out was their Gibson room. Now, a lot of shops have a section dedicated to Gibson guitars, or any type of guitars for that matter, but this was in a league of its own. This is one of the best guitar rooms I've ever seen in my life. It was absolutely stunning, and notice the chandelier. One of the standout guitars was this custom shop Gibson Freddie King. This is one guitar I'd never seen up until this point in time. Beautiful. The third thing that could make Force sound unique is the sheer size of the shop itself. It's three levels, but they have the most American looking and maybe one of the nicest Fender rooms I've ever seen in my life. Have a look at this. And to top things off, they had a great mix of used instruments and new instruments under the same roof. I love shops like this. It means you can find something that you least expect. This is by far one of the best guitar shops I've ever seen in my life. They just had lots and lots of great stuff. I'll leave a link up in the cards if you want to see the entire walkthrough. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than the last shop, check out Woodstock Guitars. While technically this isn't the largest shop I've ever been in, it definitely has more guitars than almost any of the others in this entire list. This will appeal to anyone who's into vintage instruments or if you just love walking into a shop and having a little bit of absolutely everything. As I teased earlier in the video, this is the shop with the buffalo head on the wall. <laughs> it was something that neither of us expected to see, but it just adds, I guess, its own character. Towards the back and center of the store, there's a little area that has all of these beautiful vintage electric guitars. These are all old. None of these are reissues, and some of them would cost multiple times more than my car. Thank you. 
That original Gibson Les Paul Jr. back there comes in at 38,500 Danish kroner. That's approximately 8,700 Australian dollars, which works out to about 6,500 USD. Germany's full of really great music shops and also builders of great instruments. Without question, the Germans are making not only the best cars in the world, but also some of the best guitars. A couple of years back, Rick and I followed the Tone King around the Framus factory in Germany to see a custom guitar in the building process. At the time of shooting this, there were so many walkthrough videos going up of the Framus factory that I figured I'd just give it a miss and maybe showcase it in a different way at a different time. As you can see on the walls, there's plenty of guitars on display. I wanted to do a proper Guitar Search Saturdays episode here, but the room was always just a little too busy with other people doing interviews. One of the things that surprised me the most about the Framus factory was just how clinically clean it was. It was almost like walking through a hospital. Check it out, there's no junk on the floor anywhere. It is spotless. One of the great things about the Framus factory is being able to customize a guitar any way you like. Everyone has different tastes and a flying V is right up my alley. But notice one of the big differences here, it has the scalloped frets, which is something that I've never actually played before but this was in the very sort of mid to early stages of its final design. If you'd like to see the final result of this guitar, I'll leave a link up in the cards and you can check it out. It is really, really beautiful. Munich is about two hours away from the Framus factory if you're driving at 170 to 180 kilometers an hour like we were. When it comes to guitar shops in Munich, you're hard pressed to find a more unique and interesting guitar shop than MJ Guitars. MJ Guitars is located right in the heart of Munich and it's owned by Matthias Jarbs, the lead guitarist from the Scorpions. The shop is full of musical memorabilia and if you're a huge fan of the Scorpions, you'll get a kick out of this store. But what makes it even better? <laughs> Lots of great instruments. There's a huge mix of real vintage instruments and new guitars making this one of the best destinations in Munich. One of the best things about MJ Guitars is they were more than happy for us to just check out some of their ultra expensive vintage instruments. Check it out. While there weren't any left-handed vintage instruments, I thought I'd give it the old Albert King try and flip a flying V upside down. So while I can't play to save myself upside down, this was definitely the catalyst for me getting a flying V about a year or so after. One of the shops that really surprised us the most that was the hardest to find was Pro Music Tools. Pro Music Tools is also located in Germany and it's roughly about a 40 minute drive from MJ Guitars. We accidentally drove past the store about four or five times because we were looking for some sort of signage out the front, but that's not what they care about. What they care about is just how great their inventory is. Much like the Woodstock Guitar Store, Pro Music Tools has so many instruments crammed in under their roof. If you're a fan of Music Man electric guitars, you have to visit Pro Music Tools. They have the most in the Northern Hemisphere. One of the other reasons I really love Pro Music Tools was the fact they carry a whole lot of instruments we didn't see anywhere else. Now on the ground floor, you'll see brands like Ibanez, Schecter, Godan, Fujigen or FGN, as well as many others. While this ground floor is fantastic, it's the level under the ground floor that really made us go wow. I love a nice clean store like this. Everything just looks spectacular and being able to plug into some really great amps is also a winner. If 
if you manage to get to Munich for any reason whatsoever, put a couple of hours aside and go check out Pro Music Tools. There's a famous line that says all roads lead to Rome, but in this particular case, this bridge leads to Sweden. Listening to Ghostbusters in Sweden while we drive down a, a highway. How great what? is that? Yeah, that's awesome. It's a great choice, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm impressed. Oh, well, that's uh, part of me being the DJ. You are the DJ and the navigator. Sweden's definitely up there in most complex and naming conventions. I have no idea how to say this. Is it Vinning Vinvagaden? I have no idea. Help me. Help me. My lack of worldly knowledge aside, Sweden is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen and they have their fair share of epic guitar shops. The shop used to be located in the beautiful city centre of Malmö, Sweden. Sadly, this is another shop that isn't around anymore, but that's the whole point of Guitar Search Saturdays, to kind of keep a record of all the great stores. There was so much pro gear at this shop, every corner of the store was dedicated to a different niche. I really dig this. I've got more interest than just guitar. Being able to nerd out with some audio gear is always a little bit of a secret pleasure of mine. This is another store that sadly isn't around anymore. They had a really great selection of instruments from Fender to Gibson to Epiphone, and just lots of really cool stuff. I always love shops where the staff are cool with you just grabbing a guitar off the wall and having a play just to see if there's something there that you like. This guitar almost came home with me. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have bought this Godin. It's a guitar I haven't seen since and it's the only lefty I've ever seen. It's an acoustic guitar with a really cool parametric EQ that can allow you to get some really great tones. It is an acoustic guitar, but it feels exactly like a Telecaster. I should have got it. San Francisco, California is one of the coolest cities for music and music shops. Not only have I visited every single guitar shop in this city, but I've also managed to play at a lot of the venues. San Francisco has a really rich musical history, and without the whole COVID thing, it has a really rockin' music scene. Real Guitars is located in Lafayette Street in San Francisco, and unlike a lot of the other shops in this video, they specialize just in used instruments. You walk in and there's wall-to-wall -wall amplifiers, guitars, pedals, you name it. There's always something different every time you go in there. Now I commented on a lot of these unique instruments on the actual walkthrough video, so if you missed that, I'll leave a link up in the cards. As you can see, every square inch of the floor where you don't walk is taken up with instruments. This is really cool. Real Guitars is definitely worth a look if you're into used instruments. I would consider this to be one of the premier shops in the city of San Francisco. This next shop is one of my personal favorites being that I'm a left-handed guitar player. This is one of the premier left-handed guitar shops in the world called Jerry's Lefty Guitars. Now you might be thinking to yourself, this looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. And that's because it is. This is on beautiful farmland country in Sarasota, and if you go to Jerry's Lefty Guitars, it's a bit of a road trip away from the main town. I could be wrong, but I don't know of any other guitar shops that have a flowing river right outside the door. I remember the first time I walked into Jerry's just expecting it to be like every other guitar shop where they're all right-handed guitars and my brain instantly sweeps the floor looking for lefties. But in this case, they're all lefties, every single one, not a right-handed guitar in sight. <laughs> You'll usually find up to about 400 left-handed guitars and it's an even split down the middle between acoustics and electrics. 
Another reason why this is a unique experience as a left-handed guitar player, you'll only find some of these left-handed guitars at his shop, as they're made very specifically just for his store. He might have to order 10 or 20 of them at a time, but he'll be the only one that has them. There are more left-handed Cole Clark guitars, which are made in my local city of Melbourne, Australia, in his store than I've ever seen anywhere in Australia. There's also a good selection of used guitars as well as vintage guitars like this old school Gibson 335. I actually was booked in to go back to Jerry's to review a lot of instruments this year, but unfortunately, like a lot of other things, it just didn't happen. Hopefully in 2021. And lastly, over to somewhere a little closer to home. This is Sky Music located in Melbourne, Australia. I remember when I first went into this shop, I was blown away by just how much stuff they had and it's only gotten better over the years. If you already subscribed to the channel, you know I borrow a lot of what you see on the channel from Sky Music and this allows me to basically review the things that I like the most and they've got lots and lots of those things. Just check out this PRS wall. I thought what I'd do is add in some new footage of the shop because on my original walkthrough, the video quality was pretty terrible to today's standard. So I hope you like a little bit of this current footage. Now, when it comes to Sky Music, they only stock new guitars. Melbourne's fortunate enough to have a whole lot of really great used guitar shops, but unfortunately, again, a lot of that old footage I don't have anymore. Another thing that sets Sky Music apart, not only do they have a lot of custom shop guitars, but they also have a lot of stuff that's affordable. If you're just getting into playing, there'll be something here for everybody. Sky Music also stock more left-handed guitars, both electric and acoustic, than I've seen at any other shop here in Australia. And that wraps up another Guitar Search Saturdays. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. And lastly, a massive thank you to the Patreon crew. I really appreciate your support, so thank you so much. If you want to find out more about that, links will be below. While I was unable to bring you many new episodes of Guitar Search Saturday in 2020, next year is a new year, and hopefully things go a little more to plan for everybody out there. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.